Hey guys, Jay here. In this video, I'll be showing you how to create synchronized headers, footers, and other elements for your HTML web page. Your web server will need to support PHP to use what I'm going to teach you. However, most of the web hosting servers out there, such as GoDaddy, HostGator, Bluehost, etc., run Apache, so chances are this will work for your website. You can refer to your hosting site to find out if you can use PHP with your hosting plan. So here I have an example site. It looks similar to my actual website, although the code is a little bit different. As you can see, it's pretty simple. There are a few pages. There's a home page, an about page, and a contact page. Each page has some unique content, such as the contact form, the about text and picture, and the home text and picture. However, they also have quite a bit of duplicate um, information. So the header is the same on all the pages, as is the sidebar, and the footer is also the same on all the pages. So imagine I want to change something in the header. Maybe I want to add a link to my YouTube channel. The way the site is currently set up, I would have to go into each page and put the link in the header. So if I save this, you'll see that it updates on the home page, but if I go to the about page, it's not there. If I go to the contact page, it's not there. It's only on the home page. So I would have to go to each page and paste it in. So this is fine with if I only have three pages, but if I had a bigger site or I had more stuff I wanted to change, it would be frustrating to have to do it in multiple places. It'd be really nice and convenient to do it, to do it all my changes in one place. And that's what PHP is going to allow us to do in this tutorial. So the way we do it is we first copy all of the header text and I'll copy that and I'll save it in a new file and I will call this file oops, call this file header.html. And then I will convert all of these files from HTML to PHP. Now this is where you will no longer be able to access these pages through your regular file system um, when you're loading them up in Chrome. You'll have to run them through a web server because the web server needs to process the PHP code before it returns it to the browser. So I have a web server running on my computer. If you have a hosting plan um, online, you probably won't have to worry about that because it'll always be running through the web server, even just an HTML page. Um, but if you need to install a web server on your computer, you can follow my video on how to do that. So now all these pages are converted to PHP. And if I reload this file, you'll see that the HTML file is no longer on the server. But if I go to the PHP file, there we have it. So now we need to include this header information in all of our pages. And to do that, we can remove the header text that was currently in there and replace it with opening angle bracket question mark PHP. This tells the web server that we're writing PHP code and it needs to process this before it returns it to the browser. And then we'll type include header.html. And then closing semicolon and closing bracket. So now if I save this, we'll see that nothing changes on the index.php page. And we can just copy this line of code to each of the other pages and replace the header text with this code. Save it, replace header text with this code and save it. So now if I go to these pages, which you can see my URLs that the links go to are still incorrect. We're on the contact page, that one's still cached, but each of these pages now has the little YouTube link up at the top. But again, these links are old and they no longer work. So how do we change that? Well, previously we would have had to go to each page and change the text and the link URL in the header of each page. Now since we have the header all in one file and these reference this one file, we can just go in here into the header file and make them go to index about and contact.php instead of HTML. And you'll see that if I save this and reload the PHP file, these links now go to the PHP file. So it's much simpler to change a lot of information 
if you just reference one file instead of having to change it multiple places. And we can do the same thing with the sidebar. Say we want to make this this top um, list item reference a new video or a different video. Say I want to go to my web scraping with Python instead of web scraping with PHP. Right now I would have to go into each page and change this. Or I can save all of this aside information into a new file and I'll call this aside.html and then I can replace all of this with the same code as we did before php include aside.html and then I can do that on all of the pages. So you can see it's a little bit of work to set it up initially, but it makes the site maintenance much easier in the long run. So it's kind of a toss up, especially if you have a big site. This is extremely helpful. I can't imagine going through like 10 or 15 pages and having to change every one. It would not be fun. So now the pages look the same and we can change this text by simply going here and changing it to Python and I could change the URL pretty easily and I could change the thumbnail image pretty easily and now you'll see it goes to Python and that's what's so nice about um, using synchronized headers footers or sidebars we could also um, instead of using include we could use require which would mean that the page will not load if the server can't find this file so if this file is important for the um, security of your website or your web server or your databases for some reason then you would want to use require for this it doesn't necessarily matter if our header file doesn't load for some reason so we can just use include and then there's also require underscore once which means we can't accidentally include it twice so for example if you had modules on your page and you didn't want to accidentally load it twice you might use require once or include once in this case, it doesn't really matter if we accidentally load our header twice. I mean, it could be, it would look weird, but it's not a big deal. So I'll just use include. And we definitely don't need to require it because it's not important for the security of our site. So let me know what you think about this in the comment section. Let me know if this helps you out. I'm sure it'll save you a lot of time in site maintenance. Although setting it up can be a little bit tricky. Well, that's it for this video. As always, if you found the video helpful, please give it a thumbs up so that more people will see it. If you would like to see more videos like it in the future, please consider subscribing so you'll be notified when I upload. Have a great day. I am out of here.